Godzilla King of the Monsters is basically the plot of BVS Justice League. It has a villain conflict from Game of Thrones literally and figuratively, and the mythology of How to Train Your Dragon. Take that how you will, but man, was it gorgeous. That is what I tweeted out immediately after seeing Godzilla, and I kind of want to base my entire review off of this because I think it really nails what I loved about this movie and what I didn't like at all. And so to start off with clearly the most positive thing about this movie is the visuals and how gorgeous this movie was. It is a sight for sore eyes, guys. This movie is beautiful. And you saw that from the trailers, the cinematography, the CGI, everything with the monsters and the look of this movie I thought was fantastic. And I think is the greatest thing that Michael Doherty did uh, as the director of this movie. I thought it looked visually just stunning. And of course, you're going to a movie called Godzilla King of the Monsters. So you're going to get the giant kaiju fights and monster battles and everything like that. And all the action is incredible. That is why you go see this movie. That's why you buy a ticket for IMAX, which is definitely worth it just for these fights itself. And when comparing it to the 2014 Godzilla, yeah, a lot of the complaints was is more focused on the human story in that film and there's barely any Godzilla. Well, this movie, I don't think it has too much more Godzilla, but in terms of monsters, it has a million times more monster uh, interactions and fights and everything like that in this movie than the first one. And I think really the big stand of the movie is not Godzilla himself, but it is probably the combination of Mothra, Rodan, and Ghidorah. All three of them were fantastic in this movie, and I honestly, Ghidorah is the coolest monster in a movie I've seen in quite some time. He was fantastic. And man, what they did with Mothra in this movie I thought was kind of incredible because they took what is just, you know, a giant monster. They actually gave her character and her like an actual like little arc and just like I said in the tweet when I said the mythology of how to train your dragon it really is it's really true and I thought they did a very good job with the mythology of these monsters of these titans and them living in this world and them trying to take over and the the alphas and the, the betas everything like that all that storyline I thought was very interesting I thought they set up the world very well. But the problem with this movie it is, like I said, there's a lot of monsters in this movie and they did a really good job with those monsters, but the plot is so overstuffed with a human element that I just couldn't get behind at all. And I think when you have a monster movie called Godzilla King of the Monsters, it's pretty straightforward. You'd think it'd be a simple plot, but no, this plot is so overstuffed and convoluted that it's just you know, just pick something simple, you know, and they had, I think if they were to take out the entire villain element of this movie, which I compared to Game of Thrones literally because Tywin Lannister himself is the villain in this movie. If you take his entire storyline out of this movie, it would have been a lot simpler. Like you have the Titans fighting, you have, you know, Ghidorah trying to take over being the alpha and you have Godzilla trying to be the alpha and you have those two fight. That's all you really need. But they had this whole element with Tywin Lannister. I don't know the actor's name, but he's great in Game of Thrones. In this movie, he's pretty much the exact same character, which is kind of hilarious. He even has a line where he says, long live the king. And he says that like several times in Game of Thrones. I, I understand why they cast him, but I mean not needed at all. And one of the main characters in this movie was Vera Farmiga's character, and I just, I didn't like her at all in this movie. I thought she's a really good actress and she gives a good performance, but the writing of her character is just, I couldn't get behind her. Every decision she makes up until the very last decision she makes in this movie, everything throughout the entire thing, everything she does just irritated me. I didn't like what she was doing in this movie at all. On the other hand though, I really did like Kyle Chandler and uh, Millie Bobby Brown, who plays the other part of that family, the husband and the daughter. I thought they were fantastic in this movie. I liked what they were trying to do and I really stood behind what Kyler Chandler was saying, which is, you know, if you're, if you're humans living in this world where all these monsters are fighting, just kill them. And this movie actually tried to be funny. They put a lot of comedy in it that none of it, like none of it at all landed besides one character. And I think the two main characters who are cracking jokes uh, were played by Thomas Middleditch, who I thought was very irritating in this movie. I didn't like him. His comedy, just none of it landed for me, and I just didn't understand why he was there at all. And then Bradley Whitford, who I think for the first like long majority of the movie, all the jokes he made just wasn't funny at all. But he has a couple of good lines towards the end of it. So, I mean, they have like maybe two good jokes out of like 30. So, comedy in this movie is not good. I think the funniest part is honestly in the credits, when they credit Godzilla and Ghidorah and Mothra and Rodan as themselves. I thought that was probably the funniest part about this movie. And so overall, if you're going to this movie, a movie called Godzilla King of the Monsters, looking for Godzilla fighting the monsters and becoming the king, that is what you want from this movie. That is exactly what you get. And that is the vast majority of this film. I think the action is very well done when it's not cutting between all these human character elements. Uh, but when it is focused on the monsters themselves, especially Mothra and Ghidorah, I think this movie just shines. It is 
very, very good to look at. It is a visually stunning movie, and I think that is why you buy a ticket to IMAX or to Dolby. If you guys want to see this movie, check it out for the monsters, but if not, then honestly wouldn't blame you. So thanks guys for watching this review. If you like this and you want to see more stuff just like this, subscribe to the channel and make sure you guys uh, check out all the other reviews and content that I make. I'm going to start a commentary series, which I've been saying forever, but I really hope I'm going to start it soon of horror movies. So be looking forward to that. So thanks guys for watching and I'll see you all in my next review.